Chris Broussard. So um, I'm sitting here this morning, and LeBron's got a $20 million house in L.A. Chris Paul's a good friend. Clippers probably do want to get rid of Blake Griffin, but only if they can get somebody who could sell tickets. LeBron does not like to be trapped. That I know. And Cleveland now looks like Miami. They look a little old and slow. And there's somebody on the other conference that looks a little younger. You think LeBron would make a phone call, or do you think he's locked into Cleveland forever? I don't know about forever, but I definitely don't think he's going to the Clippers to play with Chris Paul. LeBron and Chris Paul, as much as they might talk about wanting to play together, they'd be a disaster because Chris Paul is not giving up the ball. And LeBron wants to handle the ball. That's one reason Chris and Blake Griffin butt heads, because Blake would like to handle the ball a little bit. I think they'd be disastrous together. So where does Cleveland go? Where does I LeBron – what, what, what does LeBron – first phone call LeBron makes that's NBA improving the Cavs oriented. Paul George. He, I, I said it on here a couple weeks ago. Call Paul George, say, do you want to be a part of history – and win championships, or do you want to go live in L.A. and maybe not even make the playoffs? And if you go to the Western Conference and you're a lottery team or an A.C., guess what? You might not even make the all-star team. Paul George could go there and fade away and become just a, another That's good a, player. A very good argument by you. Right? And, and this is the thing, too. I'm not asking, if I'm LeBron, I'm not asking Paul George to come and be what Chris Bosh was or what Kevin Love is. I'm saying, look, man, we need you. We're not asking you to stand by the three-point line <laughs> and shoot buckets. threes. Yes, we, it's not about my team, Kyrie's team, you're the third wheel. We're just going to be a team, and you're going to get yours. We want you to play like you play, not take you know a back seat to anybody. We need you to be a playmaker. We need you to shoot threes. He actually shoots them better than Love. We need you to – and defend. He can defend KD. Like, tell him – we can't beat this team without you. I mean, you, and that's the truth. You didn't have to say that to Kevin Love. You know, you can say to Paul George, we can't beat this Warriors team without you. I mean, sell him, and it's true, it's not a bunch of BS. Sell him that, look, we need you, man. So make him feel like he's coming as a, like a top dog type. And then you got to get him to say to the Pacers, look, you can trade me to Cleveland and get a great Kevin Love for me or whoever, or you can lose me for nothing because I'm out of here as a free agent. Now, does Paul George have the, the gumption, the testicular fortitude <laughs> to go to the Pacers and say I, that? I, first of all, I think it's a great idea, and if I was Paul George, I would do it. I, th I think what you're saying here, and I love this. I love these players going and creating super yeah. teams. I'm totally for it because uh, I think Gordon Hayward may go to the Boston Celtics. And uh, and I think that won't be the that they, they can be patient all they want, but they're not getting close being patient. Steph Curry's Will Smith bombs don't hurt his legacy. We don't call him cocky when he's when he's throwing up threes in a route. The dump moves, not an asterisk. Um, he was fourth. Is in that dump move confirmed, though? Boy, it looked like it to me. <laughs> but think about this. He was fourth and plus minus in the series. He was fourth in three point percentage. He was fourth in points. He was, you could argue, Christine disagrees, but you could argue that Kyrie outplayed him. You could, I'm, you I'm could, with Christine on okay. that. They were both great, but you're right. It's arguable, okay. whoever you like. Doesn't at all ding his legacy. But he was 27 points, nine assists, and eight rebounds a game. I mean, come on. He wasn't, he was great. He was great. And I and while Durant is the best player on the Warriors. I would argue Steph's the most important. Now, some people might even argue Draymond. But, I mean, th they have to play through Steph. His range changes everything. No, he, you're right. This is, very, this is what I say. You can argue that Steph's global impact is much greater than LeBron. LeBron's just a freak of nature. Literally, Steph is changing the way seven-year-old boys and girls think of basketball. Yes. Small kids are like, I can play this game. Like, he's changed the league. You know, Wilt Chamberlain was the best player in the league. He wasn't winning the titles. And nobody, if you'd have had shoes, you weren't buying Wilt <laughs> shoes. But he was the best physical force. Uh, I tend to think 
and I, I was telling Christine this, is that Kyrie and Steph cancel each other out a lot. And LeBron and Durant often cancel each other out. And Draymond, Love, and Tristan cancel each other out. To me, the difference in this series is Clay Thompson. Because if Kyle Korver and Clay Thompson switched, I'll take LeBron in the finals. Is that I don't think the Cavs are miles away. I think they have to cross their fingers, because I think the Warriors win it next year. Cross your fingers that Clay Thompson gets tired of being the fourth wheel and <laughs> sitting in the back seat. And cross your fingers that you can find a Paul George or a notable wing scorer and defender. Do you think they're miles away? I was talking to somebody about this last night. It actually was Rob Parker. We watched the game together. Um, this series is interesting for the Cavs. Game four, winning game four, like, it, the, winning game four may, may make them feel like they're closer than they actually are. I don't – I mean, it's a good question because if they had been blown out, swept – they were blown out. They were blown out. Yes. And they were lost in five. Uh, of Several of them were blowouts. So I, I, I definitely wouldn't look at this if I'm the Cavs and say, you know what, we don't need to try to get Paul George. Let's just stick with our big three and make some tweaks. I don't think they're that close. I think they do need to try to get Paul George. I don't know if you want Melo – you know, if Melo could get New York to buy him out and then go to Cleveland for the minimum. I'd want to see Melo coming off the bench uh, in Cleveland, and he could be a great scorer off the bench. Here's, a, here's another thing Cleveland has to do, I believe. LeBron, I think this summer, if, if Ty Lue and David Griffin in that exit meeting, if they actually can tell LeBron something, then I think it should be, we need you to work on your post game. We need you, to, just like Michael and Kobe later in their careers became great close players, LeBron's never wanted to go in there. And I'm not saying you go in there exclusively or even most of the time, but that is an aspect of the, his game that he has not developed and maximized. He should be killing people in the post now. And if they double me, he's, a, he's the best passer in the world so he can pass the guys and pick them apart. If they don't double me, he should be able to go and kill him on the post. He doesn't have great post moves, but you can develop that in the summer. And that's what I, in addition to trying to get Paul George, maybe upgrading at the two guard, I would want LeBron to develop a post game and get committed to going in there when necessary because that could have been a big difference in the series. LeBron in his 14th year just had his greatest statistical finals. But I'm told this morning I have to think less of him but he can't be the greatest of all time. Today, I have to think less of him after I just watched something I've never seen. Well, look, I've got LeBron number two on my list, but I, I think the GOAT talk uh, needs to be put on high, high hiatus, okay. barring something that's unrealistic, like maybe him winning the next three or four rings. Okay, so hiatus is different than ending. I think it has to – I mean, I don't think he's going to win the next three or four rings, you so I think it has to end. You said hiatus. Like, if you ever date a girl and you just put it on if hiatus? If she told me it was on hiatus, that does feel better than it's on. <laughs> but, no, I what? think it's – I, I, I leave better. room. If, if she said, let's take a hiatus versus get out of my face and I never want to see you again. If I really liked her, I would rather the hiatus. That's right. That means she wants to go sample some other stuff well, in the Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. But, but maybe, you know – I'm still there. I still have a shot. <laughs> okay. You're right. You don't want to hear either, right? I'm a married man. I like, I don't I like the <laughs> idea of putting the LeBron goat talk on hiatus. I'm I'm leaving the possibility oh. that he could win, do a three P. Okay, if they do what but you want, I don't think that's re okay. that's unrealistic. Okay. So but I think anything realistically, I think it has to end. Yeah. I don't. I think. Why it's do you think it's still alive? I just watched. The most amazing performance by a human ever. Then he, he was should have won. <laughs> if they then if it was Wilt should have won. When it, I it, think there are similarities to LeBron and Wilt. Oh in certain God! Ways. I, I, and the mate, like you said, they both are individual spectacles who absolutely dominate. We have something that's looked like Michael Jordan. It's called Kobe. He looks a lot like him. He used to sound like him when he broke in the league. We never had anything that looked like Wilt, looked like Magic, or looked like LeBron. We, 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 when, when Magic broke into the league, six, nine and a half yeah. point, Wilt was like a high jumper and a volleyball star. Yeah. I've never seen anything like LeBron. But My that eyes are doesn't telling mean me, they're better. 
Well, just because it, they were the first. Of I their like kind. the hiatus talk. I think there's a lot of times a relationship is put on hiatus, but the embers of passion still burn. Yeah, for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it maybe hiatus. I, I think it pretty much has to end. I'm just leaving a, Listen, a small flicker see, that you never well, know because LeBron you is so two, great. But you, I, I think it pretty much has to end. Well, that's how you two operate. I like to keep my relationships open. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> uh, it's not going to go well if Anne's <laughs> nope. listening tonight today uh chris broussard it's a pleasure having you on that paul george thing is that's tasty they gotta make it happen man i'm serious and paul paul do you want to win you can live in la in the off season you're gonna be young when you retire in in relative terms you you got your rest of your life to live in la yeah that's a good sales picture you know 